Oh, you must be wondering what this is. It's not githeri. It's a roti. Didn't you notice? I'm Indian. <laughs> Indians in the house, I can see you've showed up tonight. But I know all of you. Yeah, that group is my friends. That group is my family. In fact, it's my brother's birthday today, and on the count of three, I want you to say happy birthday. One, two, three. Happy birthday. Thank you, I owe you one. But I wish more Indians came for events like these. But I understand, they're all at Diamond Plaza. <laughs> eating chicken tikka and naan. But when we speak of Gideri and roti, Indians and Kenyans have been together for the longest time. We came in over a century ago to build a railway, a railway which is now abandoned because we have the SGR. But my father didn't come in as a railway worker. He was a century late. So he came in as a biology teacher. He taught at St. Mary's. Now, since Don and Lucas were doing some banner waving in this house, it's, I know there's some St. Mary's in this. So, Asensia! Asensia! Don, the eyes have it. So my dad went to India nine years later and kidnapped my mom and brought her to Kenya on the promise that when she arrived, she could drive his car. When she arrived, there was no car. She had to walk everywhere. But my dad was charming and the country was inviting, so she stayed. They stayed in Pangani, which was the parklands of the time. So my mother felt right at home with her Indian neighbors. They had a son a year later, and they loved him. He wasn't me. <laughs> they had another son three years later, and they loved him. He wasn't me either. <laughs> they had a third son five years later, and by now they were tired of loving their children. <laughs> So they sort of just dragged him through life. And that was me. I was born in MP Shah Hospital in Parklands, which is no surprise because all the Indians in Kenya come from Parklands. But what might surprise you is some of those Indians are Christian, like Kamlesh Paul Patni, and myself. Only that some of those Indians have been Christian generation on generation. This is because my parents came from a state in India called Kerala, which, just like Goa, has a high population of Christians. So let's get this right once and for all. By nationality, I'm Kenyan. By origin, I'm Indian. By religion, I'm Christian. And by tribe, and this is the latest now, I'm Asian. <laughs> Let's deconstruct this for a second. As you may be aware, Asians were listed recently as the 44th tribe of Kenya. Now, like many Asians everywhere, I am happy for this. It's been a long time coming. We are part of the Kenyan fabric. Where do you think the bajias and the samosas and the chapatis came from? Yeah. Where do you think the tuk-tuks came from? Yes. And pit latrines. Yes, we brought pit latrines to Kenya. Only we call them Indian toilets. And we love them. We put them everywhere. We put them on our trains. Yes, there's a hole right there in the floor. You do your thing. It goes onto the railway track and greases it up nicely. In fact, we love those things so much, I wouldn't be surprised if at one point we put them in our planes. Yeah. There's a hole right there on the floor. You do your thing. People in the desert think it's raining. They think the salty taste is something to do with the weather. And so, this is why Indians settle into Kenya so easily. 
easier than any other foreigners, the Europeans, other Africans, such as Nigerians. <laughs> a few months ago, I was in Meru for a work assignment, and we had some lawyers from Europe. One of them needed to use the washroom. I pointed at a shed in the distance, and I said, over there. He was wearing khaki shorts, safari boots. Clearly, he wanted the safari experience, right? <laughs> he entered. A few minutes later, he came out with a look on his face as if I had betrayed him. <laughs> and I kid you not, to this day, he has not come back to Kenya. But what surprised Indians the most about being listed as a tribe was a tribe is a traditional social division linked by common culture and language, typically having a recognized leader. So, first of all, who is our leader? <laughs> is it the guy of Bidko, Vimal Shah? Is it Manu Chandaria? No, seriously, Indians in the audience, Take me to your leader. <laughs> so when you run into an Indian on the street, he could, be any, he could be anything. He could be a Gujarati. He could be a Punjabi. He could be a Keralite like myself. All different. You see, Punjabis have a rough and tough way of speaking, straight to the point. Kind of like Kikuyu's. Wemo daka negwedete. See what I mean? You see the similarities? Except Punjabis have a lot of swag, kind of like the Luos. Yawa, Gini Tekumanadini. And then we have the Gujaratis. Now, even though the Gujaratis have the business acumen of the Kikuyus, their language is very much like Kimasai. Jauchu, Jauchu. Ero, Ero, Ero. Ocho, Ocho. You see the similarity there? My language, Malayalam, is kind of like you're singing a song, just like Kikamba. Kilonzo, Weva? Cheta, Evrea? And now, all these different people I've described in Kenya, we are the same tribe. But this works in my favor. You see, there's this girl I've been trying to marry for many, many days now. <laughs> but she's from another community. And in India, this is kind of like a disaster. But now, if I bring her to Kenya, problem solved. We'll be the same tribe. It wouldn't matter if she's Chinese, Japanese, Punjabi. Yes. The 44th tribe is Asian. So that's the Chinese building the SGR. The Singaporeans, the Thais, all jumping for joy like, yay, we Kenyan tribe. <laughs> We've got our brother in North Korea doing some bad things with nuclear weapons. If we need to discipline him, we just take him to our leader. Vimal Shah. He'll give him cholesterol. So that's how diverse India is, just like Kenya. Kenya had 42 tribes, and we're now at 44 and still growing. But what strikes me is, when I enter a Matatu, they don't look at what tribe I am or what race I am. To them, I'm just a customer. When I go to the market, all the Mamambogas call me Kijana, even though that can be a bit frustrating. I mean, I'm past my quarter life and they still call me Kijana. Now I know how the president feels. <laughs> He's in his 50s, and they still call him Kijana. But what the common theme that strikes me is the love that I receive from all these different communities in Kenya reminds me of one thing, that people love to feel accepted. Gideri man, you know him? The new Makmende in town? This man, he's, he's everywhere. One minute he's with the queen, the next he's with the president, 
The next he's starring in Game of Thrones. He's... But imagine this. An ordinary county worker from Kayole was able to unite people. The people that laughed at his memes were from all over Kenya. And similarly, if you look at sports, sports can unite people from all across the world. When Floyd Mayweather beat the Guinness and the Jameson out of Conor McGregor, we all sat down to watch together, regardless of where we came from. And so this is it. We create these reasons to divide us. Sometimes other people create those reasons for us. But as humankind, we like to be together. We are social beings. We crave a sense of belonging and acceptance. So this is my theory. We are always waiting and looking for something that will unite us. Anything that will bring us together. So as we wait for that next thing that will unite us, as we look for it, or as we become a person that unites others, let's sit back, relax, and enjoy some roti! <laughs> Thank you. Thanks.